In this video, I'm gonna step through the very, very quick process of how you can implement lights into your scene, in particular with interior lighting, and get the results that you want with the fewest steps and fewest iterations as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the purposes of this demo, I've put together just a really simple basic scene. Um, it's got kind of this metal pillar, some wood flooring, and some concrete around it. So very much like just an office interior building, um, which I hope should showcase the principles of lighting um, very well. So before we dive in though, and start adding lights and going into tweaking settings, there are a couple things that we need to have set up ahead of time, which I highly, highly recommend you do for your scenes. So um, there's really three things that we need to cover. The first thing is, is we need to make sure we have a light mass importance volume. Because we're going to be baking our lighting, it's important that we tell the engine what what assets, what uh, parts of the scene should be baked. So to do that, if I come out, um, You'll see here that I've added this light mass importance volume and scaled it around our assets. Very easy to add if you just go into your modes panel and you can type in light mass and there it is light mass importance volume. So that's the first thing that we need. The second thing that we need is to make sure that we've got a neutrally lit post-processing volume. Now I covered this in a previous video more in depth, um, but it's the exact same principles here that apply. So if I go back over to my modes panel and type in post, you can see here post-processing volume, drag that into your scene, scroll down and make sure it's set to enabled and infinite extent unbound. So that way um, it covers your entire scene. Now the critical settings that you should uh, you should focus on for this um, are very, very simple. Um, expand out your exposure tab, make sure compensation exposure compensation is set to one. Your min and max values are also set to one. Uh, that will ensure that as we light the scene, the engine isn't going to try to adjust for it being too dark or too light. So by having just these three settings at a minimum, this will make sure that we're seeing the lighting as it is and we're not going to be chasing ourselves in circles to make those adjustments. Um, the other three settings that you can make, which are optional, um, are underneath the film tab and that is the slope, toe, and shoulder. I found these settings to be as close as possible um, to uh, what would essentially be disabling, disabling the tone mapper in the engine. Loosely translated, what that means is that um, if you set your slope to 0.6, your toe to 0.5, and your shoulder to 0.25, um, it should be balanced out. It shouldn't have a lot of contrast. It should be, um, for lack of better terms, very, very flat. So again, optional, but you can set those. And those are the only settings that we need in our post-processing volume to be able to get started. And the third and final thing that we want to check is underneath our world settings, we want to adjust our light mass settings. So yours will probably look like this if you haven't rolled it up. So click the little carrot drop down. You can click this guy as well. Um, and these are the settings that you should change. Static lighting level scale to 0.25, number of indirect lighting bounces and number of sky lighting bounces, both set to 10. You don't really need more than that. Um, and our indirect lighting quality set to four. So what this will do is this will ensure that our lighting bake solver will be more accurate and get a little bit more light into our scene. And that's it. Those are the three things we need set up for a scene. So now we can begin the process of adding lights to our scene and tweaking them to the way that we want. So let's get started with that process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just actually drop in a default spotlight. Again, I'm still in unlit mode here. I'll go ahead and position it to where I think this will be good for our test. Um, I'll get it close to this wall so we can kind of see what's happening. And I will switch to lit mode. All right, so immediately out of the gate, it's pretty dark. So um, I'm not gonna change anything else other than just our lighting intensity. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this guy to say 160, and that's it. Default spotlight, set to stationary. All I've done is increase the intensity. So let's go ahead and just build our lighting and see what kind of results we get. All right, so our lighting's done building, and as expected, it's very close to kind of what we had seen by just adding the light by default. Um, so you're probably sitting there going, okay, that's cool, man. I know how to add lights, um, but I need more than that. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this next process. So um, the steps I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk through, you know, how do we make this light look and react like an actual light, get us the results that we want, but then yet still be able to tweak it with the fewest number of iterations possible. So then um, we're not spending all day just changing settings here and there. So let's do that process right now. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do when it comes to making my lighting look more accurate and more realistic is to start with the basics and then 
advance through that. So sounds pretty simple in theory, um, but how do we translate that? So there are a couple settings that I want to change first and foremost. So I'm going to go into here and really the only three that I'm going to be focused on is our inner cone angle, outer cone angle, and my source radius. So I'll start with source radius and this is effectively just the theoretical size of the light bulb. So I'll take this to about 15 and we can kind of see that as indicated here by this little yellow sphere. Uh, this is just going to help with better lighting calculations and give us um, a little bit better result. So I'll set mine to 15 and then for this light, um, the next thing I want to do is increase my inner cone angle. So this is effectively just the main beam of the light. So I'll set this to 12 and then my outer cone angle is how how far this light uh, affects, like how kind of soft this light um, is pushed out. So I'll go ahead and set this to 50. And again, these are arbitrary. Um, now I do wanna make one note, um, kind of one caveat to this, that if you're using lighting profiles, which I definitely recommend for more realistic lighting, um, you're gonna need to look at that, but the inner and outer cone angles are gonna have a much um, much uh, more intense effect when using those lighting intensity profiles, um, the IES profiles. So, um, but focus on your inner cone angle again being that main beam of light and then the outer cone angle being, you know, the softness of that light, how far does it fall out. Um, okay, so I've got those three settings changed now and this is what I, I meant by my earlier comment about starting with the, the simplistic stuff and then moving on to the advanced. I'm not going to worry about how much light this light is casting into the scene right now. Really what I'm going to be focused on is the first point of contact of this light and so what I mean by that is you know, our light's here in the ceiling and it's being, you know, uh, shine, it's shown down right on top of the floor. So where it hits the floor, this is my primary focus right now. So I'm going to focus on where it hits the floor. Now I'm going to take this up to, let's say like 250. Um, and again, if you remember, we're, um, our post-processing volume is making sure we're not ramping up exposure. Very, very important. Make sure that's set up. Otherwise this may look like you're increasing values and it keeps staying the same it's probably because you have automatic comp uh, exposure compensation turned on and you don't have it disabled um, through your post-processing volume. So again, total side note, but um, so if I jump back, that that is my first and foremost focus is this intensity of where it immediately contacts. So I'm not gonna build lighting because with stationary and only having one light, this is pretty much the result we're gonna get when it bakes. Um, so that's my first priority is to focus on my intensity. The next thing that I want to do is I want to focus on where it falls off. Is the light actually you know, affecting the world like I want it to? So for that, I'm going to go ahead and build the lighting and we'll focus on those aspects. So let me go ahead and kick that off. And again, I'm building it medium quality. So um, we'll get some artifacts, which is totally fine, um, but that should be sufficient for now. So let's go ahead and build lighting and we'll jump back and we'll take a look at the results that we get. All right, so our lighting is now built, and as expected, we get a lot of the results that we want. And again, I, I say this as expected because it's a lot easier when we're working with one light in the scene versus say you've got like 50 other lights. Um, but you can see through here, again, we've got our intensity, this first point of contact is exactly what we want. So at this stage, I'm comfortable, I'm happy with, with the way this light is um, affecting that immediate point of contact, it's fall off, it's perfect. But if I switch to game mode, you can see, it's really not as realistic as you want, right? Like we're missing this bounced lighting. That is probably what brought you to this video in the first place, which I see a lot of people um, asking about, how do I change this? Now I'm gonna show you the right method, or I said at least right method. This is a method I found to be the best. Um, but before I do that, I wanna show you another thing that you may be tempted to do. So I'm gonna jump over into my world settings. Um, again, if you don't have this tab, it's under window world settings. Um, and underneath my light mass settings, there is this option to do environment intensity and diffuse boost. So I could increase these. So as that light's bounced, it's going to project more energy from that light into the world. And you're like, hey, cool. That's exactly what I want. Yes and no. We do want more of that light to bounce energy onto the walls, to have that reflectivity, to um, you know permeate further throughout the level. But what we don't want is the artifacts that can come from doing this kind of global um, boost. And what I mean by that is if you increase your environment intensity to diffuse boost, yes, all of your lights will push more light into the scene. However, you're gonna get a lot of these splotchy artifacts, which is not what you want. So that in my opinion is the wrong way to do it. The right way to do it is exactly what I'll show you right now. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and select my, my spotlight again. So I'll deactivate game mode, click my spotlight, go back to the details panel, and what I want to focus on here is this indirect lighting intensity. So I'm going to increase this. Now, this will vary on your scene scale and size, but for this demonstration, I'm actually going to increase this to 600. It's like, whoa, it's a lot. Well, kind of. We'll see what happens. So um, that's the only change I've made to the spotlight. So I'll go ahead and go into my build lighting. We'll see what happens. Jump right back when it's done. And we'll see the difference that it makes with that indirect lighting intensity um, cranked up. All right, so now our lighting's built and it should be pretty obvious the difference that this has made. So I'll go ahead and press G uh, again to go into game mode so we can just hide our, our little helpers. Um, and you can see here that light bounce that we're getting. So that's what we were looking for. We were looking for that energy of that light to kind of permeate into the rest of the scene to make it look more realistic. Now you might be saying that, you know, man, this looks like crap. Well, yes, it will look like crap because right now we've got our build quality set to medium. Um, if we were to change this to production, obviously this would take a little bit longer to build, um, but these artifacts would be remedied. Um, so that's what we're looking for. This is probably the problem you're running into when it comes to lighting is that you're getting these nice, you know, contact points, but you're not getting that rest, rest of that bounce. So um, to cover real quick, just that process of what we did. So I set my intensity. So I've got my first point of contact. That's solid. I set my cone angles, inner and outer, and my source radius. And I know that this is a fall off of the theoretical bulb that I want, and I'm good there. The last process is increasing this indirect lighting intensity to get more of that bounce into the scene. And that's it. It's that simple. But let's take it a step further and see, okay, we've set this light. Is this light bulb good, but can it really hold up in the scene? Let's do that real fast, and then that should conclude this quick tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and go into here, and I'm going to move this light. And we'll kind of duplicate this as if we had, say, like a, a track light. Um, now, the first thing that we're going to notice is you get this red X on the light. What does that mean? Because we have our light set to stationary, it means that they are casting dynamic lights. And there is a hard limitation in Unreal of four overlapping dynamic lights. So this is telling you that based on the cone angles of all of these, there's at least four of them intersecting. Um, so that's OK for the purposes of this demo. I'm just going to switch them all to static because we can have as many static lights as we want to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go in. Let's do build. Um, this time I'm actually going to turn it up to production just so we can see what it is with the artifacts. Um, I'll build it and we'll jump back, see the results that we get, but it should be pretty obvious that we're getting exactly what we had hoped for. So we'll let this cook, we'll come back and we'll conclude this tutorial. All right, so there's our scene. The lighting is built. Um, obviously a little intense on the indirect lighting um, for that, but um, hopefully the principle should be pretty, pretty clear. Um, by by focusing on your first point of contact with the light and then moving on to your indirect lighting intensity uh, means you should have very few iterations when it comes to lighting your interiors. Um, now you're probably going to seem to think like, well, this actually looks kind of crappy, which I agree, I think it kind of does. Um, but that's as simple as me just going in. I know my intensity on the first point of contact is solid. I can just go in, decrease my indirect lighting intensity, and now my scene is balanced. Um, and it's really that straightforward. So um, I hope that this tutorial helped, um, especially when it comes to lighting interiors and what you guys can do with that. Um, as always, I appreciate your support. Um, drop a comment um, if there's things you wanna see in future videos. Um, and as always, you know, thanks for supporting me, supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. So catch you on the next one.